Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be discussing the difference between SIADH and diabetes insipidus. These are concepts that sometimes people get confused. So in this video, I will compare the causes, how patients present, and also how we manage these patients. So make sure you stick around and don't forget to hit the like button and show some love. Now, before we dive into the differences between the two, let's learn a little bit more about vasopressin. So vasopressin, also known as the antidiuretic hormone, is released by the hypothalamus. So it basically, it retains water, right? It's the opposite of diuresis, of a diuretic. So it has several functions. So one being osmotic balance. So pretty much whenever, let's say, the concentration of your blood is high, your hypothalamus is going to release antidiuretic hormone to retain more water and reduce that concentration. Blood pressure regulation. If your blood pressure is high, you probably don't want vasopressin floating around because it's going to retain more volume and which can increase the blood volume, right? And increase your blood pressure subsequently. Sodium homeostasis. If let's say your urine is highly concentrated, right? With sodium, your body is going to reduce the amount of vasopressin it releases so that you can get rid of more water, right? So that your urine will become less concentrated. So with that being said, in SIADH, you have an increase in the amount of vasopressin. And then in diabetes insipidus, there's going to be a decrease in the amount of vasopressin. So based off this, we kind of have an idea of how these patients will present. So now we know which one increases the vasopressin and which one decreases it. So for SIADH, because you have a lot of vasopressin in your blood, right, you're going to be holding on to water, right? You're going to have difficulty urinating. Patients are going to present with swollen legs, right? A lot of edema. And then your sodium level, right, the concentration in your blood is going to go down because your blood volume has also increased. Now for diabetes insipidus, right, the vasopressin is not working that well. So the efficacy of it is also going to decrease. So therefore, you're going to be urinating a lot they're going to be very thirsty right parched and then the sodium concentration in the blood is also going to increase because the blood volume has technically reduced so now let's look at the causes of siadh and diabetes insipidus for siadh um, a patient may have a malignancy in the brain which will lead to the hypothalamus releasing a lot of vasopressin or it can also be a malignancy in the lungs. So even though it's not in the brain, this type of cancer is going to cause your brain to release a lot of vasopressin and drugs such as anticonvulsants and antidepressants. For diabetes insipidus, there's two main types. So there's a central and then there's nephrogenic. So for the central, it's usually caused by a malignancy, which will reduce the amount of vasopressin that is released. So nephrogenic can be caused by an infection where due to this infection, the vasopressin is not working well when it binds to the receptor. Or it could be passed on, so hereditary. So this is due to a mutation in the vasopressin receptor, which is also known as AVP, arginine vasopressin receptor. So there is a gene mutation and then this is passed on. So whenever the ADH binds to it, it's ineffective. So now we have the management of SIADH and diabetes insipidus. Now, if you understood the pathophysiology and also the mechanism, then this should be straightforward. In SIADH, yes, you're holding on to a lot of volume, but we give the patients saline. So this is hypertonic saline. Because remember, in these cases, there is a lot of blood volume that it dilutes the blood and it makes the sodium concentration reduce making it seem like you have low sodium. So you have to give patients some sodium. Then we give loop diuretics to get rid of any excess fluid or volume that we may give to the patient when we are giving them saline. So the loop diuretics will get rid of that. And then you could give something known as a vasopressin receptor antagonist. So these work on the AVP receptors in the kidney. They bind to it and then they prevent the vasopressin from working. And then we have diabetes insipidus where in this case, the patient is losing a lot of water. They're very thirsty and the antidiuretic hormone is not really working. So that is why we give desmopressin, which is pretty much like a synthetic version of ADH. 
So it's going to go to the kidneys and bind to the AVP receptors. And then it's going to allow your body to start retaining water so that you're not losing so much. Hydrochlorothiazides have also been shown to have some benefit. The mechanism is not really clear. And for the NSAIDs, it's able to reduce the amount of urine that your kidneys produce by causing vasoconstriction. And that will be the end of this video. I hope I was able to break it down so that you was able to understand the difference between SIADH and diabetes insipidus. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and then leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching this video and take care.